Railroad. Howdy there, folks. Y'all please stay seated as we take a ride together along the backcountry of Old Calico. As we go around this first curve, notice the miners' cabins built along the canyon walls. As crude as they appear, they were ideal for protecting us from the hot summers and cold winters here at Calico. I heard before the independent types would like to benefit themselves. But the community miners stayed in boarding houses, mainly for modern convenience, like home cookies. I got my nickname, Hardbox, because that was exactly the kind of mining we did around here. The rock is so hard, and we didn't have any water to use for mining, so we had to hack and blast away at the rock. During the boom years, Calico's 10 square mile mining district boasted a population of nearly 2,000, with almost 1,000 actually living in the town side of Calico. After the mining ended, Calico really was a ghost town. That's to say, it was mainly abandoned. But it was restored and reconstructed by the Knott family in the 1950s. Back then, they had workers actually living here. These folks served a greater security for the town, a tradition that continues to this day. and to remind claim jumpers to stay away. Remember how the first traces of silver were discovered right on the ground in the spring of 1881. A Calico silver rush was on. The miners came from all over, including well-known towns such as Virginia City, Bowie, and Jonestown, Arizona. I certainly do, Hard Rock. I had silver fever, too. Coming up on the right is one of the original ore cars we miners used. We would push these out of the mine and stockpile our ore until we had a train load full. Then we shipped to a processing mill on a narrow gauge train similar to the one you're riding on now. That particular train was called the Waterloo Mine Company Railroad, and the spur was run off the mountain right up Calico's Wall Street Canyon. The closer a railroad could be run to the mines, the better. This large area to the left of the train was where some of the miners lived. There is still one surviving wall out there that's outlined in white. Beyond the mountain, to the northeast, was East Calico, where, among others, big Bismarck mine was. There was a little community out there with a store and a saloon. The Stacy brothers carried mail a mile and a half between Bismarck and Calico, even training their dog, Percy, to do for them. I remember that. He strapped a saddlebag right on his back so he could carry the mail and packages. As we pause here, take a look at the top of King Mountain, where your engineer is now pointing. Look at the last letter in Calico and run your eyes down about 300 feet and a little to the right and you should see a mine entrance in the side of the mountain. This is a tunnel to the Silver King Mine, one of the richest and largest mines in the Calico Mining District. It produced about $10 million in silver in about 11 years. There were about 30 miles of tunnels on 14 different levels inside that mountain, belonging to several different mines. However, the only mine that is open daily for guests to safely go into themselves is the Maggie Mine. Just below the Silver King, there appears to be just an ordinary pile of rocks. Actually, that is remnants of the Silver King Mine itself. Not long ago, that pile of rocks was assayed to contain a few million in silver. But before you jump out of the train and climb the hill to fill your pockets, I should tell you that it would take millions more just to process that silver. So that would put you in the hole. Well, back to playing the lottery. Now, as we get moving, look out to the left. It wasn't too far from there that a man got himself shot trying to jump my mining claim. I had already warned that Mr. Tobler about trespassing on my good line of mine, and he ignored me and showed up again. This time he got grazed by a few bullets I sent in his way from my little pistol. He called the law and had me arrested before I could unload my full gun on him. The jury did not find me guilty as I was just protecting my property. Well, Annie, glad no one was seriously hurt, except maybe that Mr. Tobler's pride. 
Now, if y'all look left, this is an ore crusher called an Arista. Miners would hitch a horse or mule to that crossbar and have it walk round and round, which caused the steel ball to drag over and crush the ore before it was taken to a processing mill. Of course, by the 1880s, this method was kind of old-fashioned, but it was still a respectable way of making sure every bit of silver was scraped up. We didn't work hard to get all that silver. Yeah. 